G'day, it's Rob here again. Well, in that last video, I did a bit of uh, melting with my little homemade furnace that was made out of a non kg LPG or propane similar. It works fantastic, it does a good job. And I mean, over the years, I've done a lot of casting. I started with aluminium, which we all do with, and uh, mastered that. Then I moved on to make this furnace, which is capable of a lot more heat, and that way I can melt brass and also copper. So in the last video, you would have seen where I poured three lots of molten brass. And uh, yeah, today we'll have a look at the result, and we'll see the difference that you can get when you use scrap material to melt down brass, you know. It's not all the same, it varies enormously. So let's have a look at what we got. So here we've got the three pourings and uh, I've taken them out of the moulds. This is pour number one. These were tap fittings, you know, the bathroom tap fittings, old ones they, they wear out. And this was all good solid unplated brass and you can see that that turned out really well. That's the colour you want. That's basically what you'd expect. This one here was some also just plain uncoated brass. These were some old brass curtain hangers that I melted down just at the end just to make it more compact. And colour wise it's similar. You can see it's got a bit of uh, silvery look about it but that's come from this one this is the troublemaker and this is the one that caught me out because while I was milling down these bathroom taps and fittings these were just the brass taps no coating no, no metal plating of any sort it's that's what you want these were the flanges that go behind the, the taps and press up against the the tiles on the wall, it's like the decorative stuff. And I mean, this brass has to be pretty good brass because it's, it's a wearing, it's got a thread and the, the shaft is on, running on a thread. So it's got to be good quality, otherwise it's kind of wear out. The decorative stuff couldn't be any, any grade of brass. And you can see what's happened here, that it's, uh, it's not all brass. I'll come in close on it. So you can see the issue that when it poured in the mould that way, that mould there, it filtered to the top. And that's how much from there to there is how much of this other stuff, other metal, was in the was in the pour. And a lot of it just chipped off. If you tap that on steel you can see how it just chips off. So I don't know if this is a lot of zinc, because brass is zinc and copper. I don't know. I touch the metal flange on the grinder. I always check brass to see how much you know copper is in it. But you touch it on the grinder, and it rubs it back, and you can get a good idea from the colour. And yeah, so this is either chrome plate from the chrome plating, or it's it's got a lot of zinc in it from the fact that it's low grade brass and uh, it's not going to be subject to any wear. This is the type of fitting we're talking about where there's your, your brass tap unit and the shaft. So that there is, is this, this stuff. That's, that's good quality, that, that's got to wear. This is the bit that made that, that this was, I had about six or seven of these brass ones, because these come in plastic and all sorts these days, but these were old brass ones. They look just like that. So I put them in and I did them separately, and yeah, that was the end result, that it basically turned out like that. So this dodgy metal has gone to the bottom of the pour. 
this is probably okay brass. I'm going to have to saw it off about here with the bandsaw and see if it's any good. I mean, if it's okay, I'll just turn this back and we'll see how it comes up. If, it, if it's no good, I'm going to have to melt off this, this other stuff. Well, I'll have to do another remelt. It just chips off. It's just, it's just some strange metal. I don't know what it is. Whether that's chrome, I mean, would chrome, but I mean, it seems like a lot of of it for for chrome. Maybe it's chrome. Maybe it's, I don't know. If anybody's got any ideas? It's obviously heavier than the than the brass because it's gone to the bottom of the mold. So. Next thing I do is I'll saw it off and we'll just see, you know, how much of it is waste. The brass looks like it goes to about here, so we'll saw it off. Okay, we can see from this that the, the, the majority of the stock is going to be okay. It's solid brass right through. This is the bit I cut off and I could have probably cut it off a little bit further this way but anyway, better safe than sorry so I'll uh, toss that in the scrap bin. I won't try and do anything with that. But with this we should be able to clean it up and it should be quite usable and uh, do the job. So yeah, this was an interesting situation. I've never had this happen before, but this shows you what can happen when, you, when you're working with, with rubbish. So I'll cut the end off of this and then I can melt it in with this next time around. So, you know... You don't waste any of this stuff, so we'll saw that off next. Okay, we've cut the end off, as you can see. That's all good brass. And, uh, yeah, these two bits should come up quite nicely. So that will just go with this in the next melt. One thing I did do that I won't do next time is when I poured into this, which is what that is, Normally I preheat the mould on the vent, remove it and pour the brass in. But this time I left it in the vent, in, in the furnace lid, poured the brass into it and then left the, the mould in the vent while I was melting some more brass, thinking it would that way get rid of any voids or cavities on the side, which is what it did. It did a fantastic job. It's uh, really clean on the outside, whereas that one's a little bit perforated here and there. But what happened was <laughs> the mould got pretty much red hot. And so the difference in expansion rates between the, the uh, cast iron and the brass wasn't as great when it cooled down and I had a hell of a job knocking this out. It was a really tight fit. You can see where it's sort of polished on the end where I've been, you know, where, it, where it's sort of pushed its way out. So yeah, I won't do that again. Next time I'll do it the old way. Heat the mould, take it away, pour the brass, let it cool down. But yeah, you definitely want to preheat your moulds and that way you'll avoid any flash chilling which will give you an uneven surface on the outside. So yeah. We'll turn these down now and see how they come up. Well, 
We're going to get brass out of it, but I'll have to turn it back quite a bit. Well, I turned up the brass, and as you can see, it's come up pretty good. That one's, yep, great. And this was the one that was dodgy, and I managed to get it up pretty right. There's a oh, tiny little blemish there, one there, I think. But I salvaged that out of it anyway, so it's all usable. You know, you can always turn it down to whatever you want. So it wasn't a complete disaster. But, yeah, I learned a few things, you know, a couple of things, and that is if it's got any sort of chrome plating on it or any sort of plating, expect this to happen because it didn't just burn up or form in that flaky dross that I showed you. It actually melted down and uh, into its <laughs> basic form. And, uh, yeah. Luckily, it it did, being heavier than the brass, it did actually go to the bottom, which was which was that way. So I did manage to to get rid of most of it and salvage some brass. I wouldn't want to re melt it with that daggy stuff on because it would just pollute whatever I put it in with. So yeah, be careful. Do it separately and then be prepared to uh, cut off the drossy ship at the bottom and then either re-melt what you've got or just go with what's left over and then of course we've got these bits left over as well and uh, yeah just melt them down and good to go so there, there you go it's not difficult just a few little things to be aware of the trick to it is get the brass as hot as possible I mean I had that crucible glowing red hot get it absolutely as molten and runny as you can and then um, you won't get any imperfections preheat your moulds but don't uh, don't overheat them otherwise if they get red hot you may have trouble getting the brass out normally it comes out pretty easy but in this case I overdid it a bit and uh, I had to build away at it to get it out but it came out alright well that's it for me not much else to say. See you next time. Cheers.